Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to get the tilt shift effect in Photoshop. I've done a video on this uh, maybe five or six years ago, but it was using the older version of Photoshop. I think it was CX6, and Photoshop has changed quite a bit since then, so I thought it was time to update my video. Now, for those of you not familiar with the so-called tilt-shift effect, it imitates the look of a tilt-shift lens. Now, probably the more common way people may use a tilt shift lens is for architectural photography. When you're standing in front of a building and typically using a wider angle lens, that building would be falling backwards. You could use a tilt shift lens to make that building look more straight. Another application of tilt shift is when someone is using a larger format camera, a four by five, a five by seven or an eight by 10, camera cameras that tend to have bellows on them and you could change the angle of the lens to the film back what will happen when you do that is you'll get a plane of focus and that plane of focus isn't necessarily horizontal meaning if i focus here on this image and i use a a really wide aperture um, it will be a in focus to a point in front of that focal point or focus point and then it will start to go out of focus and similarly going away from that focus point it'll be in focus to a point then it will go out of focus so it's more horizontal with a tilt shift lens you could really tilt that so it could be diagonally through the frame and this is a very interesting effect that you could get and a lot of photographers that use larger format cameras take advantage of this kind of look. I would encourage you to look at the portraiture of the photographer Gregory Heisler. Gregory Heisler often uses larger format cameras and he will often have a plane of focus even on a portrait going through his photographs and he does that with the camera. Well you can do it in Photoshop and that's what this video is all about. Now I'm Using this image, this is the same exact image I did in that other video five or six years ago. Because often when you apply a tilt shift effect, it will make your scene look as though it's a model, meaning a model on a tabletop that you're shooting with a macro lens. And you'll see once I apply it to this, it'll make this scene look like it's a model. So to do it, what we're going to do first is we're going to duplicate the background layer by hitting Command J on my Mac, it's Control J on a PC. This next step is optional, but I do recommend you do it. We're going to make this layer a smart object. The reason why we're going to do that is because we could then apply a filter, the tilt shift filter to it. And then if we don't like it, we could go back in and readjust it. If it isn't a smart layer, you won't be able to go back in and readjust it. The adjustment will get baked into that layer and you'll have to start over. So to make this a smart object, we're going to right click right on it and go down to convert to smart object. Once it does that, you'll see that it will have a little square in the corner. That means it's a smart object. Now we're ready to apply the tilt shift effect to it. To do that, we're going to go up to filter and then down to blur gallery. And you'll see there's a number of effects here. We're going to go to tilt shift. When we do that, it will open up the blur gallery dialog box. Not only does this include the tilt shift effect, but it includes those other effects as well. Field blur, iris blur path blur and spin blur. Now we're only uh, interested in tilt shift. There's really two main sliders to be concerning ourselves with. You'll notice on the image there is an overlay. It consists of four lines. Two of the lines are solid lines and two of the lines are dash lines. For those of you that are familiar with like graduated filters in a lot of applications, this is very similar to that in that the space between the two solid lines is perfectly in focus. Let me turn up blur. So you could maybe better see. So the space between the solid lines is perfectly in focus. 
Then the space between the solid lines and the dashed lines is the graduation. That's where it's starting to go out of focus. And then outside of those dashed lines, it's totally out of focus or set at maximum out of focus as per your setting of this blur slider. Now you could turn this. Uh, what you would do is just hover over one of those dots that are on the center line. And when you do that, you'll get this curly kind of arrow. Click with your left mouse button and you could spin it. You also could move it around if you need to. You could just click on this middle kind of button and just move it around. Also, you don't need to go over here to adjust the blur. You can go to this outside ring and just kind of click and spin on that outside ring. And you'll see the blur slider is moving as I do that. So it's a really very, very easy uh, tool to apply. Uh, you kind of line it up the way you want, like I'm doing now, like this kind of get some blur on there to start. Then you could move the lines uh, independently of one another, meaning, well, to a point. You could go on this solid line right here. When you hover over it, you'll get a vertical arrow. If I click on it and drag, it'll move that and the dash line down. It doesn't affect the other solid line or the other dash line. So I could move these so-called planes of focus around a little bit like this. Then I could go to this uh, uh, dashed line, which affects the graduation, and I could kind of push that up or push that down as I see fit. You know, pull that down a little bit. And this one here, I can maybe push that one up a little bit like that. And then I could go back to the blur slider, and I could affect the blur a little more, make it more to my liking. Now, if you want to see a before or after, you could either turn the entire filter off, just click this little checkbox, let it update. You can see it's updating there. There's before and there's after. Or you could go up here and just do this preview button, turn that off or on. There's also a high quality checkbox. You can see how it's updating, it's kind of rendering. If you click on high quality, it'll give you a more accurate look at the blur, but it takes longer to render. And you could save the mask to channels, that's rarely ever done. But right now, um, kind of like it the way it is. Uh, below that, there's a distortion slider. Uh, this distortion slider is a more subtle adjustment. So even if I do go and max it out, um, once it renders, you won't really see much of a change. So this you could apply and kind of zoom in if you need to by hitting Command plus or minus to zoom in, Command plus, Command minus to zoom out to kind of look at the effect. Also, there is, um, once you add that distortion, let's say I do add some, you could have symmetric distortion by clicking here. It just is, gives it a little bit of a different look if that's what you're going for. I'll just leave it on. It really isn't doing much to this image. Below that, uh, we have some effects. Uh, you could have the lighter areas that are blurred kind of bokeh out. So you could kind of, as I move that to the right, you'll see the lighter areas kind of get this kind of bokeh kind of blur to them. Don't really like the effect on that. Let me just turn it on briefly. Once you do that, you could uh, affect the color of that as well. And then it's affecting a very specific range of the highlights to add this kind of bokeh like burst to. You could control that with the range right here. So if I move this to the left, you see I'm affecting more of the image. Now I don't like the adjustment at all. So I'm going to turn it down. Now you see there's some other tabs there. This middle tab won't uh, be anything. But here we have noise. You could add noise or grain to the image if that's the look you're going for as well. Uh, by the way, this little box down here is for all these effects. All these effects. So, you know, if you're adding path blur, it would affect that as well. Now, um, let's really just finish off this image. I'm just going to turn the blur down just a little bit. I just don't want it quite that blurry. Maybe something like that. And then when you're done, you just click OK up here. And when you do that, it'll apply the image to that layer. Now, as you look at it now, you can see I have this plane of focus that's going diagonally through the image. But also, I think you'll agree, if you look at it, it kind of is making the image look as though it's a miniature model on a tabletop. Now, technically, if you were using a macro lens shooting a model on a tabletop, the plane of focus wouldn't be diagonal. It would be horizontal, but it kind of just still gives that look. Now, if you find you need to go readjust anything because we made this layer a smart object, 
just double click on the words blur gallery and when you do that it will return you to this dialog box where we could come in and we could readjust the tilt shift blur maybe bring down a little blur and you could move the mask around too you could do everything you could you could have did right when you first launched it and there and that's it that's how you apply a tilt shift look to an image um, again, uh, if you're interested in this and see how someone might apply a tilt shift look to portraiture, check out the work of Gregory Heisler. I'll have his name uh, listed in the description below this video. Gregory Heisler is a fantastic portrait photography. As a matter of fact, I think he holds the records, the record for Time magazine covers. Now, he doesn't always use it. He doesn't have it in every single portrait, but if you search through his work, you'll see a lot of images, a lot of uh, particularly images that are of the waist up or full body shot um, of the tilt shift look he's kind of using. And he uses to do it, um, I think usually a 5x7 camera. Sometimes he uses an 8x10 and he's shooting film, but it's still the same effect. And you could do something very similar in Photoshop as I just demonstrated. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>